Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on solving equations with a variable on each side. As you can notice on our first example, we have a variable here with the 5c and a variable on the right side here with the 7c. And so, in order to solve this equation, what we need to do is either move 5c from the left side to the right side, or the 7c from the right side to the left side. And either way works. And so if I rewrite this equation, 8 plus 5c equals 7c minus 2. I'm going to pick the 5c this time. Now, how do we move a plus 5c to the other side? Well, inverse operations. Subtract 5c from the left side and the right side. Because as we subtract it from the left side, that kind of just goes away. We're left with 8 equals 2c minus 2. And now we're down to a two-step equation. We need to get our c alone. First thing we're going to do is add this 2 to both sides of the equation. Eight plus two is 10 equals 2c. Lastly, Opposite of multiplication is division. Divide by 2 on both sides. And 10 divided by 2 is 5. So 5 equals C. And so as we go to check our solution, we start off by writing the original equation. 8 plus 5C equals 7C minus 2. And this type of question is where the check step comes in handy the most. We have 8 plus 5 times 5 is going to equal 7 times 5 minus 2. And the reason why I say it becomes unhelpful the most is for the longest time you've been checking equations where just one of the sides stays the same, like 8 plus 5c equals 2. You wouldn't have to plug in a variable on both sides or a solution to both sides, and now you have to. And this is where it comes in handy, because we have 8 plus 25 equals 35 minus 2. Well, at least it should if 5 is our answer. Does it? 8 plus 25 is 33, and 35 minus 2 is also 33. So our solution is checked as the left side equals the right side when 5 equals C. In example 2, we have variables on both sides, but we also have distributive property. And so we're going to need to distribute this 1 third here to the 18 and the 12 Q. And we're going to need to distribute the 6 to the 2 Q and the minus 7. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to distribute the 1 third to the 18 and the 12 Q. And if you need to write this out, feel free. 1 third times 18 plus 1 third times 12 Q. And that's going to equal the 6 distributed. 6 times 2 Q minus 6 times 7. Well... 1 third times 18, 18 over 3, if you will, is 6 plus 1 third times 12, 12 over 3 is 4q, and that's going to equal 6 times 2q is 12q, minus 6 times 7 is 42. And now we're down just like example 1 now, where we have the variable on both sides, the 4q and the 12q. And again, it doesn't matter whether you move the 4q over or the 12q over. What I would recommend, though, is think, if I subtract 4q from both sides, this q is going to end up positive over here. If I subtract this 12q from both sides, this q is going to end up negative. Now, again, both work. It, it doesn't really matter. It's just kind of a matter of preference. I prefer to work in positives, but you know, it's not 100% necessary. So if I were to subtract 4q from both sides here, the left side 
and the right side. This cancels here. We're left with 6 equals 8q minus 42. And now we're down to a two-step equation. Add this 42 to both sides. Six plus 42 is 48 equals 8q. And lastly, divide by 8 on both sides. And 48 divided by 8 is 6 equals q. Now we are asked to check our solution. And so we'll start off by rewriting the original equation, 1 third times 18 plus 12q. And that's going to need to equal 6 times 2q minus 7. Now as we make our substitutions in, 1 third times 18 plus 12 times 6, that's going to need to equal 6 times 2 times 6, I'm running out of room on the side of the screen here, minus 7, yikes, 1 third times 18 minus, well, 12 times 6 is 70. 2, and actually that's a plus, I miswrote that, so that's 12 plus 72, my apologies, equals 6 times 2 times 6 is 12, minus 7, and as we continue here, 1 third times 18 plus 72, not minus, but plus 72 is 90, equals 6 times 12 minus 7 is 5. Well, 1 third times 90 is 30. 6 times 5 is 30. Left side equals right side, so it is nice and checked. Now, as we get into these more complex equations, some equations have no solution. And the symbol that represents no solution is this thing right here, sometimes called the null set. Sometimes you'll have all solutions. And so the definition of identities, an equation that is true for every value of the variable. In other words, no matter what you put in for the variable, the left side is going to equal the right side. So solve each equation and check your solution. Well, this is another distributive property question. And so we'll distribute the 8 to the 5c and the minus 2. So we'll have 40c minus 16. And that's going to equal the 10 times 32 is 320 plus 40c. Well, that's kind of interesting there. We have 40c on both sides. Let's see <laughs> what happens. We need to move the variable over to one of the sides. So let's just subtract this 40c here from the left side and the right side. And let's, again, pun intended, see what happens. We're left with, well, this here canceled out, and so all we're left with is that, the negative 16 equals, well, plus 40c minus 40c canceled out here, so all we're left with on the right side is 320. Well, does negative 16 equal 320? Well, no, that it doesn't. They're not equal to each other. And so the answer for this question is no solution. And again, sometimes you'll see it written as a null set. And there is no check step really here because what are we going to check? Just putting in a random number? I, I guess you could. 
but there's no check step necessary for equations that have no solution. Here in example 3b, we're asked to solve the equation and check our solution again. So let's go ahead and distribute the 4 to the t and the 20. So 4 times t is 4t. 4 times 20 is 80. And that's going to equal 1 fifth times 20. Well, 1 fifth times 20 t, 20 over 5 is 4, so 4 t. And then 400 over 5 is 80, so plus 80. Now already, we have a pretty unique situation here where 4t plus 80 is equal to 4t plus 80. Let's continue solving to see what happens. If I were to subtract this 4t from both sides, Well, again, this kind of cancels out, and all we're left with is the plus 80 equals, and this cancels out 4t minus 4t, and so all we're left with on this side is the plus 80. And in this case, does 80 equal 80? Yes. And so what we're going to write for this answer is all numbers. And sometimes you'll see this written as all real numbers. Now questions like example 3a and 3b will be mixed in with questions that have just one solution. So your directions will be to check your solution. And if you wanted to again on this one you could put in the same number for t and you'll get um, the same answer on the left or right side and that could be a neat experiment in class. But for your work on questions like 3a and 3b, when you have no solution or all numbers slash all real numbers, you do not, for now, need to check these. And so we have this nice little concept summary here. Steps for solving equations. Step one, simplify the expressions on each side. Use distributive property as needed. And we did that several times today where we distributed a fraction or we distributed an integer to try to simplify both sides of the equation. Step two, use the addition and or subtraction properties of equality to get the variables on one side and the numbers without variables on the other side. Well, the first thing we would then do is get all the variables to one side and then we'd solve it like a normal two-step equation, getting the numbers, the integers without variables onto one side and then divide or multiply and so forth, and then use the multiplication or division property of equality to solve. So we're used to two-step equations and one-step equations. We're even getting used to multi-step equations. But when you have variables on both sides, simplify both sides, get a variable on to the left or right side where you only have then variables on one side, and then it'll look really familiar to equations you've been solving for quite a few years. Find the value of h so that the figures have the same area. Well, we need to think about how do we find the area of a triangle. Area equals 1 half base times height. And so we're given a height of h here and a base of 6. We're given a height of h minus 2 and a base of 10. These two areas need to equal each other. And so if I have... For this triangle here, 1 half base times height, it needs to equal the area of this triangle here. So 1 half base times height. Well, if we were to plug in what we know on the left triangle, 1 half times our base of 6 times our height of h needs to equal the 1 half times the base of 10 times the height of h minus 2. We're trying to set the two areas equal to each other so that we can then have the same height. And so h and h is what we need to solve for here. Let's simplify both sides, like we just talked about in this concept summary. 1 half times 6 is 3. 
times h is h. So 3h, easy enough, equals half of 10 is 5 times the h minus 2. And here we do need to do a little more work. We do need to distribute. Left side simplified for now, we have the 3h equals 5h minus 10. And now, subtract 5h from both sides, so we can get all the variables on one side. We're left with 3 minus 5 is negative 2h equals negative 10. And before you get too worried about having negative numbers in an area question, we can divide by this negative 2 on both sides. And h is going to equal 5. And so our answer for this question is D, 5. And that is it for this lesson on solving equations with the variable on each side. Good luck.